Bible class can come. I want to welcome you to our Monday Thursday service. Monday Thursday is a time when we remember Jesus eating with his disciples the Passover meal in the upper room. He transformed the meaning of that meal. We Christians now refer to that meal as the Lord's Supper. We might also call it communion or the Eucharist. Instead of celebrating it once a year, we celebrate it as often as we want. Some people might celebrate it every day. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, is said to have taken it at least twice a week. So if you'd like to participate in communion with us, I encourage you to get some bread and some grape juice, if you have any, so that I may consecrate it with our bread and juice, and then you may participate with us in the taking of communion. This is an extreme manner of taking it because we are in extreme times. So helping us with our service tonight is our worship leader, Grant Barlett, and song leader, Richard Owens, pianist, Judy Owens, and our technicians, Alex Spar, Larry Schreiber, and sound and acolyte is Cheryl Barlett. The scriptures that we will read in this service come from the Revised Standard Version or the New Revised Standard Version. So let us now prepare to worship. Let us pray. 
And normally we would take up an offering, but since we are practicing social distancing, instead of our usual practice of taking an actual offering here during our worship service, if you would like to give, you may go to our Facebook page or our website and you'll notice a button there that, where you can donate. Let us now bow our heads for silent prayer, and then I will pray and finish with the Lord's Prayer. You can join me in the Lord's Prayer. Father God, you are worthy to be praised. You do wonderful, miraculous things. You have always been a God who delivers people from bondage and slavery, even to this very day, and we are thankful for that. So as we come here today, uh, we want to remember tonight to give you the praise and adoration of which you are worthy. We do the best we can, even though we are humans. And as we come tonight, we remember some of the people that I know I've been praying for, People like Val's mother and Larry, who have coronavirus. I pray for a Mason, who's on a ship with other sailors under extremely difficult conditions. And my understanding is that several of those sailors have coronavirus. Father, we pray that you protect Mason and all of them, and they will know that you are God, and they can turn to you, and you will be with them. We also tonight think of those who have lost loved ones. Several funerals are occurring. Not only of people who have died from coronavirus, but people who have died from other situations as well. Have mercy upon their families because they are unable to get together and comfort each other as they once were able to because of the virus that we have now in this country. We also tonight want to remember our health care workers, doctors and nurses, and anyone out there, that nursing home, uh, people in the nursing homes who are taking care of people. So many people in so many ways are, are out there on the front line, they're being exposed to potential danger. We ask that you protect them. Well, we also think of those who maybe work in factories and manufacture drugs and pills and different things to help us. Now, we are thankful for them and pray that you will help them in meeting the demand. People are manufacturing masks and respirators. Well, everything is needed. And we give thanks for those people. We also think of our, our sheriff here in Fayette County. And other counties as well, as they have to continue doing their work. The deputies, local police officers, Father, have mercy upon them and protect them too. And we lift up to you those who drive trucks and work in stores and trying to get products to us as fast as they can. We ask that you help them also. And so there are so many that are out there that need our prayers. And we ask that you help. Help them to do their work. And so now we remember the prayer that Jesus taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to read to you from Mark chapter 14. Verses 12 through 26. And it says, On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover
Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he said two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went into the city and found everything just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. And they began to be distressed and say to him one after the other, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread in the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better if he had never been born. Got a question for you tonight. If you partake of communion, the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, and you have coronavirus, will you be healed by taking that holy sacrament? The blood of the Lamb during that first Passover protected the Israelites, or we, they were known as Hebrews then, protected them from physical harm. And John the Baptist in the New Testament pointed to Jesus and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So in Mark chapter 14, we see here that at the Passover, Jesus is adding a new meaning to that Passover meal. And he indicates that he is the Passover Lamb. It's his blood, his body. And when we read the New Testament, I think you'll discover that the blood of Jesus protects us, but protects us from spiritual harm, spiritual death. For example, Romans chapter 5 verse 9 says, Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath of God. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. In Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 5, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood. Now I have read and heard stories of people who were healed of physical illnesses because, or maybe I should say when, they took communion or shortly thereafter. 
But I think all of those people would have to admit that it was really their faith in Jesus that provided the avenue for that healing to occur. Okay. See, during this time of the coronavirus, I am encouraging you to take the Lord's Supper. Take it as often as you can. Not because there is anything magical about the bread and the grape juice, but for many people, the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist communion, is the occasion for faith in Jesus Christ. You know, many people, if you ask people, survey Christians, and ask them, when do you feel the closest to Jesus? Some of them will say, it is when I take communion. And so it is during that special closeness with Jesus that perhaps many people have a faith in him that they don't have at other times. And so communion becomes the occasion for some people to be healed. But still, it is faith. It is their faith in Jesus. Not in the juice, not in the bread, in Jesus. Matthew chapter, or Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 29, it says a woman who had been suffering from a hemorrhage for 12 years, she had endured much under many physicians and had spent all she had and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And what did Jesus say to this woman? Did he say, my clothes have magical powers. Keep touching me. That wasn't what he said. He said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. See, just the touching of the clothes was the occasion. But Jesus wanted her to understand that it was her faith that was what is, was important. On another occasion, in Mark chapter 10, Jesus encountered a blind man by the name of Bartimaeus. And so it says, then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. So during this time of coronavirus, it's not the Lord's Supper or communion that would heal you. But it's the opportunity for you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Now John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, as we call it, had a radical twist in what he thought the Lord's Supper was all about. He believed it not only to be a confirming ordinance for saints, but he called it also a converting ordinance for sinners. Holy Communion could be a life-changing meal for sinners. When you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you discover that Jesus ate with sinners. Some were harlots, and some were church leaders. Some were tax collectors who were hated by the Jews in the time of Jesus. Some knew they were sinners, but perhaps some didn't. But if they ate with Jesus, they discovered a friendship, a love that they have never had before in their life. And they realized that there was hope, hope in Jesus. But they were also confronted with the fact that they needed a Savior, and his name was Jesus. So if they ate with Jesus, they were confronted that he was the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to God the Father except through him. And he, still today, is the only way to God the Father. John Wesley's brother, Charles Wesley, wrote a psalm where he said, 
Come sinners to the gospel feast. Let every soul be Jesus' guest. You need not one be left behind, for God hath been all humankind. So I ask you, come to the table and be set free. Come and put your faith in Jesus as your Savior. There's a song called Nothing But the Blood. We will now sing that song. <laughs> Merciful God, 
we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of any. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And so that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. I invite you to remember that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it, he gave thanks to God the Father. And he said to his disciples, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And then likewise, he again gave thanks to God the Father and he took the cup and he said, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. When you drink this, drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father God, I pray that you now consecrate, you yourself consecrate these elements of bread and juice. Not only these here, but those of people who are out there partaking of the elements with us. I pray that each of us will sense the presence of Jesus as we partake of this holy sacrament. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to have faith. To put our faith in Jesus and nothing else in him alone for our salvation. For anything that we are needing. Father, we are so thankful that Jesus was willing to make the greatest sacrifice that has ever been made. Not only did he die for us, but he took our sins. He became our sin so that we might become your righteousness. And without Jesus, we would have no hope. So thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you now to stand. And we're going to sing, There is a fountain filled with blood.
contact us, you may do so. Our phone number is 740-426-6219. You may also email us at jeffersonvilleumc at yahoo.com. Our, our post office address is 71 Jeffersonville, Ohio, 43128. And our actual street address is 13 East High Street in Jeffersonville. We have a web site as well, jeffersonvilleumc.org. So we invite you to join us tomorrow night for our Good Friday service. And you can find a link to this worship service and all our worship services on our church's Facebook page, or you can go straight to our channel on YouTube. And remember this, that Jesus is coming back, and we want everyone to be ready. Let us pray. Father God, increase our faith, even though it only takes a little faith, but sometimes we doubt. Take away our doubts tonight, and help us to rely totally, 100%, on Jesus. Father, we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from unrighteousness. To him be glory forever and ever.